Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual duelist here, and you guys may have noticed I'm in a Pokemon game. So, and today, and for part of this week, maybe not part of next week, I want to talk about uh, cross training and how we can be better at Yu Gi Oh! by playing other games. This is no exception. Uh, Pokemon is, in fact, one of the most like, strategy sound video games and for like a handful of reasons too uh -huh. and i thought it would make a perfect first video plus like who doesn't enjoy running around and just sort of like grabbing stuff while talking to their friends and that's kind of what we're doing here so how does playing this game how does playing pokemon make us better at Yu-Gi-Oh? well Six of one, half a dozen of another. Let's see if that one's shiny or not. It is not. Um, sorry about that. But uh, part of it comes down to preparation. So in Pokemon, we don't build a deck. We build a team. And one of the things that uh, the newer generation of games has given us is these little raids. So you come out here, like this is a Cacturn. We obviously would not want... Uh, for most forms of Pokemon, we would not want to play with a Cacturn um, as part of our team. So, like, let's let's go find another one of those and see if we can't. I don't know. Find something that's almost good, and then I'll explain it afterward. Um, but essentially, saying like we have good cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, we have good Pokemon in Pokemon. Was that shiny? That's why I hate running. Sometimes you just miss things, and if you're not paying attention, you don't know what the shiny sprites are. You will run past them in this game. I've only encountered one, but that's that's neither here nor there, my friends. Ah, uh, let me just, there's another one. Ah, uh, well that might be actually just a walking around character, no? So, okay. Yeah, this one is just a character walking around. Who is it? Let's take a second. Sandy Gast, you you might play ghosts. This might work out for you. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to catch it, figure it all out. So let's go through the rigmarole. Let's catch this one and see whether or not it's worth preparing. Um, so it's a ghost. He changed his type due to terrorization. So uh, based on all that, I know I can hit him now. So we'll do that. Break his form change. Goes back to normal. Let's see about throwing our Pokeball at him. See if it works. Works. And uh, let's see if it's the same as it is with like the raid characters. Because the raid characters is what we were going after first. And now that that's been added to our party, let's put our character where nobody's going to get him. Let's interact with Gimme Ghoul real quick because those coins are worth it. And let's go ahead, let's open this. Now, normally you can't see their stats here. You would see, you know, like trainer data, stuff like this, uh, blah, blah, blah. Right here on the right, it's going to tell us what the stats are, but it's not going to tell us what the air quotes stats are. Um, so it just is what it is. What we can do once you beat the game. And this is what I mean as far as uh, preparation. We can come over here and we can get the with the judge function. We can go ahead and see that yes, it is fairly clear that the raid Pokemon, as well as the Terra Pokemon that just wander, they do have a certain level of bests, which are going to be the perfect individual values. And uh, in Pokemon at least, uh, the, there's this whole breeding mechanic and again, um, for the most part, this would be the equivalent of us buying booster packs to get the right cards. Um, breeding the Pokemon is a way to get a good stat on a character. But it doesn't matter if it's a character that nobody's going to want to play with. Um, you've got to get characters um, that you know are good. So like this Garchomp here. We went through, found some raids with the Gibbles, got a breeding set, did the in-game stuff did those got the stats going uh got the correct nature on it um and then went ahead with a move set uh 
found the right ability that we wanted. Everything there makes it what I want. The only thing I might change about this guy, and I've seen some people doing this online right now, is if you look at the top right, you'll see it's dragon and ground. Those are the standard types. And in gen, whatever this is, nine, um, it's got the terra type, which is the crystallized form, like that sandy ghast we just got. So it's terra typed for ground. Um, there's one city, by doing the terra rage, you get the crystal shards. You turn in the shards in order to change the terra typing of one of your characters in order to cover up the weaknesses. So like Garchomp being Dragon of Ground, again, Yu-Gi-Oh players, you may or may not know this, um, 2x weak to uh, Dragon moves, 2x weak to Fairy moves, 4x weak to Ice moves. Um, we can basically eliminate all those weaknesses by changing it into Terra type Fire. And when it goes into that, it's no longer going to get any bonuses for being a Dragon or a Ground type. But it's also going to lose any weaknesses or resistances it had. So in this instance, like you'll be able to hit him with electrical attacks. But Fairy no longer does what it was supposed to do. And Ice is actually resisted at that point. Instead of being like times four damage, it's uh, resist by half. So it goes the total opposite way. Um, so... I want to say that this game has like 400 characters. Just go real quick into our Pokedex. 400, I do have the complete Pokedex. Um, going back in here, you then have to worry about what we would do in Yu-Gi-Oh. So like in Yu-Gi-Oh, we build the deck. In this, you build your team. Um, so let's see, there should be a way to do battle teams. Team one. Okay. So if I were to create a team, something I might do is, number one, I may not put them all in here in a specific order. I might just put them in all random. But we do have certain restrictions similar to, like, ban lists and stuff. So if you were playing, like, the Nintendo Pokemon Company uh, VGC-style tournaments, uh, everything rounds down to being level 50. But you do play with a monster clause and an item clause, meaning I cannot have duplicates... Uh, of either. So even though I have these two Haluchas, which are slightly different, this one hits a little harder, this one's just a little bit faster. Um, in essence, they're the same character because they're both Halucha. Even though one has the Expert Belt and one is a Focus Sash. Um, they do play two different strategies based on their abilities, their hold item, and their attacks. And uh, it's all fine and well. Uh, but I can only use one of them at a time. So just, like, let's do just a quick basic team, and I'll put them in there in the right order. Uh, we're going to register the Azumarill and the Amoongus, because this is actually one of my favorite strategies. So I'll throw these both out first, um, and our setup for the board, similar to, like, how you'd build a board in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I use the Amoongus. If you look over to the attacks, I use the Rage Powder. draws the attacks to him, which allows the Azumarill to use his Belly Drum, go up six stages of physical attack and then uh, the citrus berry will kick in based on our effort training for the hit points and heal the Azumarill basically back to full health. Now once his attack has been raised that high um, what's going to happen is uh, we are going to take advantage of his ability with the huge power uh, which we'll show you here in a little bit uh, but then all you need to know is Superpower hits hard, Play Rough hits hard, Aqua Jet hits hard, and is priority. And as long as Amoongus is still around, um, you can continue to use the Rage Powder. This protects the Azumarill from getting attacked. Um, and they make quite a formidable little team right there. Now right there, I've also got one Black Sludge, one Citrus Berry. So let's get my uh, Life Orb Attacker, basically just a Sweeper set. Uh, looking at the stats again, this guy's very heavy on speed and very heavy on attack power, but it's physical attack power. So I had to make sure all my attacks were physical um, in order to make sure that he was good to go. Then we're going to use... What is my Gengar doing these days? Um, this could be another good uh, sort of like a lead. We could lead with this Gengar. 
And what we could do is if you look at the attacks, we do have the Icy Wind. We also have a great special attack as well as a great speed stat. What this means is that we can go ahead, use Icy Wind, hit both of our opponent's characters. Um, because we should be able to outspeed them. I mean, this uh, 350 even outspeeds this Guard Chomp. And this Guard Chomp is the fastest that one gets without choice scarfing. Um, so we can go ahead and do this. This could be a separate type of lead. Uh, because again, when you do this type of battle, you're only going to be playing four on four. Uh, so you don't take the whole six with you. But uh, before the game starts, your opponent actually gets to see which six characters you have. Does not get to know their move sets, does not get to know the items, doesn't know the abilities. But this is where predictions come in. Um, so this gives me one lead set up here where we lead with the Azumarill and Amoongus. And I choose two Pokemon I think will benefit them. Uh, Garchomp, which is a good sturdy Pokemon, could be played either way the team goes. Gengar could be a type of, uh, not exactly a suicide lead, but a uh, lead that helps us set up for other fast characters or just slowing them down. At which point, we don't have a Leftovers yet, but we do have the Black Sludge, which is essentially the poison type Leftovers. So we can also get this Gyarados in here with Intimidation. Um, and what this is, is it's going to be a Dragon Dance setup character. So we could use this in combination with A, the Amoongus, or B, the Gengar. Um, and use it. We could also pair it off with the Garchomp since it is part flying. We can go ahead and start blasting the Earthquake without having to worry about Gyarados getting hit. And uh, I think just to make this a nice round team, we're going to go ahead and take the Halucho with the Expert Belt. Um, so again, this is me like how you would go ahead and you'd build a team. Now, not all teams in Pokemon are going to be like this. Uh, we have things like weather setup. Uh, and with weather setups, one of my favorites is obviously rain. Um, uh, another one I really, really like is uh, sandstorm because the sandstorm just uh, does like little bits of chip damage here and there. And then when you have uh, an opponent's character that is using things like black sludge, leftovers, or uh, healing berries like the citrus berry, or using a uh, an item that's going to try to prevent the one hit KO like the focus sash you start seeing that things like the sand damage at the end of every turn even if it did hold on we can still get the KO at the end um, they don't get the full two turns out of the character the way they wanted and that's fine um, but it does help us so like weather is a good thing I know another one that I used to play a lot of was Trick Room um, and uh I mean, there's not too much to say outside of, like, if I were to get into the mechanics of everything, which this is just not the channel to do that. Um, I hope that, you know, maybe one day I can do something like that and help people get better at a game like this. Um, but for now, I mean, it's, it's good to understand, like, just the basics of, like, you could play online. You, you can see what I mean by as far as, like, team preview. Uh, using the flat rules 50 with the item clause and the Pokemon clause and uh, you guys could see what it would take to actually play against uh, or play in like regional events national events playing against the people all around the world uh, again you could take this system with you since it's on the switch uh, it could be a console where it's all wired to the TV like it is for me right now or you guys could take it around with you like a Game Boy or a DS or you know insert whatever other portable systems were ever made uh, PSP um, that's all good and for those of you who are trying to play this right now there are some codes for you guys to get these three right here um, you look them up online uh, or I guess I could put them down in the comment or not the comments the description below but I did save it to my phone so if you guys give me just half a second I will tell you what the codes are. Um, so if you want to get Mew, uh, you will go to the mystery gift and I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do that right now. Because that's probably just easier. Because honestly, if you're playing games and you, you enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh, chances are you know somebody who enjoys this too. So you go down here, you do this, you go to uh, get with password or code. 
it's going to communicate to the internet. I just needed to be able to show you guys what the passwords look like. Um, because that would be the most helpful part. So just real quick, for get your Mew, it is literally get your Mew. So get, again, O is not a thing, so you got to use the zero. And this will get your Mew. Uh, pretty, pretty easy. Um, to get the dark Terra type Charizard there, you want to go dark Terra. And his Pokedex entry. So three zeros and a six. Um, and again, I think they, they're past a thousand Pokemon now. So that's what's up with the triple zeros there. But this will give you that Charizard. Um, this one's good till August 31st, 2023. The Mew was good till September 18th, 2023. Um, the next one is only going to be good for a couple of days after I upload this. Um, but it is going to be for a uh, shiny Grimmsnarl. So you want to spell it to be Ty. Uh, 2022 champ. Um, and I'm guessing that this is like a... Uh, Grim Snarl that is essentially uh, an, an actual player's Grim Snarl from the uh, the championship in 2022. So those are going to be the three codes that you're going to want. That's what you're going to do. Again, you would just press you know start afterward. It'll verify. Um, it should tell me I've already got it. So that's cool. But um, that'll give you uh, this, this, and this. If you guys have already bought the DLC, you can also get the Hiswain version of Zorark. And a while back, there was some flying Pikachu thing that was pretty cool. So, I got that one too. But that's, that's realistically it, guys. Uh, the cross-training as far as playing Pokemon has little to do with the Pokemon and just everything to do with the level of preparation that you guys are going to just encounter. Uh, building a proper competitive team. And again, we did build our team. Whoop. There it is. So there's our team one. Um, and again, I, I don't know. I'll slowly scroll through this. Anybody who's uh, looking for like a uh, guideline on this, uh, a lot of these guys are like five bests and like a stat that doesn't matter. Um, just sort of neglected. Again, Amoongus doesn't have to be fast. Um, just has to be sassy. Um, guard chomp again, gotta be nice and strong. Uh, again, guard doesn't need to be very physical because it's all special attacks. Uh, say, so on and so forth. This, I just got lucky. I, I did a lot of eggs to get to Halucha. And, uh, there were some that were in the, uh, like those little crystal caves. And again, you want to find those. Let's see, is there one within sight right now? It's it's looking like maybe all the way up top there. Uh, and it's just like one of those little raid portals. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully it wasn't too weird seeing an episode totally done in a Pokemon game. Um, but this is what we could do as far as cross-training with Pokemon. Um, the next time I come back, it'll be a different game. Probably not a video game. It'll probably be another card game this time. Um, I just thought that this would be pretty fun so hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you have uh, and if it does help you with playing Yu-Gi-Oh you know like comment subscribe all of the things my friends most important thing I just want you guys to go out and have a great day uh, so I'll see you guys again next time later